when I take students out of class and bring them up here to help me, they honestly have no idea what it is. I get a lot of the same questions all the time. You know, what is it? Oh, the plants are feeding the fish, and the fish are feeding the plants, and how does it work? What he did on his own in his greenhouse is real life. It's real food production. It's a real solution to a food problem. The idea is incredibly inspiring. My mom is really into gardening, so she decided that she wanted to have a greenhouse on our property. And we decided it would be a good idea to kind of check out some different alternatives as to what you could put in a greenhouse. So we decided to go to the University of Nevada, Reno for a, a workshop basically on hydroponics. And it just intrigued me. I said, Mom, listen, I think I could build one of these systems if I had the money to do it. So I, I had a little bit of money in the bank and I decided to spend it on the greenhouse. He just took off with it, and at some point, there was, you know, two to three to four trips every weekend going to Home Depot to buy things, and he kept having all these ideas about what he wanted to do next, and then he just went to the internet and started looking at um, YouTube videos and learning um, different ways to build systems. Honestly, I loved, I loved it. I loved building the system. I loved seeing the plants grow. At that point, I was producing food for my family and neighbors and selling some of it and teaching people how the systems worked and getting people started at their homes on their, on their own systems. And then I came across uh, aquaponics. That really put a new twist on the whole thing. So here we have a 300 gallon trough that houses the fish. From the fish tank, the water is gravity fed into these three grow beds. From the grow beds, the water drains out into a series of sump tanks. Well, most kids today, uh, unfortunately, don't really understand where their food really comes from in a whole food system, because we are several generations now lost from folks that actually grew up on a farm and were very connected in a local way or a regional way to their food. From the sump tanks, the water's pumped up from a pump that I have right here into these NFT beds. Uh, nutrient film technique is the term. And so the He's embarking on uh, something that is growing as we speak. 50% of our fish that we eat today is uh, farm raised. That's going to go to about 75% in the next five years. So um, he's getting the best of both worlds. He's using the plants to remediate the uh, toxins uh, that the fish give off in their waste. So he's getting a uh, vegetable product and a protein fish source about a year later. The water is gravity fed back into the fish tank where the water is completely purified and the fish are able to survive in a clean environment where all of the ammonia has been taken out of the system. I figured I would convert all of the systems that I had originally built hydroponically into aquaponic systems. So I tweaked the systems a little bit, put in air pumps, basically enhancing the greenhouse aquaponically ever since. So I was in an ag science class and we were, we were doing some work in the greenhouse and I noticed that really there wasn't anything going on in the greenhouse itself. I asked my dad, I said, do you think we can you know, try and put in an aquaponic system in the, in the greenhouse at school? He said, yeah, write up a proposal, present it to your teacher and the, and the school council and see, see what they say. I had no idea what it was and what I did was I looked it up on YouTube also. I, I went to YouTube and said what is this aquaponics uh, all about and I was just uh, blown away by his enthusiasm, his drive, his determination and I said this kid's going to get this project done. Presented the project and they said that's a fantastic idea. Um, if you can raise the money we'll allow you to put a system in the greenhouse. He had to get a list of materials and costs. He had to go to the principal and ask. A lot of legwork, six months worth of nothing in the greenhouse and nervousness about whether or not he could pull this off. The community support was, was a, a very large portion of this project. I had to go around to local organizations and be able to raise the money. So the community 
was an instrumental part in the system. When we have an uh, AC relay operated by 110 volts, when that fails, the contacts close and start the DC powered air pump. Okay. Pierre came along with the aquaponics project of which we had basically no idea what it was. And he showed us how it works and we were asked to help him with that. And it's been a great project and a good learning experience for us. When Pierre started this project, one of the things he had as a goal was to be able to supply our cafeteria with fresh vegetables right out of this greenhouse. It was a, quite a process because anytime you do something in a school, it's uh, about 10 times the paperwork. We have a wonderful salad bar that's used by hundreds and hundreds of students every single day. And it's really neat when those kids know they're digging into those greens they're coming right off of our campus. So this is a small scale aquaponics system that I designed for a classroom or residential setting. So you're looking at maybe 75 to 100 lettuce plants every two months. I want to bring this system into many different schools. And the learning opportunity that a system like this provides is, is immense. You've got water chemistry, agriculture science, physics, mathematics, economics, a lot of these subjects can be modeled from this particular system. If I can provide a curriculum to go with this system, then the knowledge of aquaponics will be proliferated throughout, hopefully, the, the United States. What Pierre is doing is something that's different, something that schools aren't used to dealing with. If you think about this, you have a student who's come up with this creative model and now he goes to the school officials and he says, listen, I want to create a curriculum that I can pass on. Schools aren't used to hearing that kind of stuff because change in schools comes very slow. One of the shortcomings of education is that we don't do things that are, that are application in nature. They're all theoretical in nature. And this was a, a project that I think fit into the culture of the community and the culture of the school, that's education the way it should be.